Hi, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is your favorite animal scientist, Mr. Amos Kesta. We are back in Benin, and this is the second video from our series on the pig farm production. So we've started with the construction work. As you can see, it's already looking different from what it was the last time we made the first video. But if you look over there now, that one was being filled when uh, we made that video, but the filling is complete. So once we're done with this part of it, we're going to move over to that one and we start the construction there. So now why we have actually done it this way is to reduce cost of production because our objective is to give you a good job, effective management and also reduce cost of production to the barest minimum. Now if, as you have it over there now, if we are to do the casting the way it is like that, you're going to spend a whole lot of money and material and casting it like that so we had to partition the pens first so casting the individual pens becomes very a lot more easier for you to handle so this is the passage as you can see the whole of this to the extreme end is the passage we have 52 pens in this structure um measuring 12 meters by uh 150 meters so that's the way it is designed now these are the individual pens so you can see we have one by the right and uh, one by the left and each of these pens are exactly the same size so what we are doing now is this is the entrance of the pen so from here you can have access into it the pens are designed in a particular format that it makes it looks like a room and a parlor so when you come in here, this is the first area, which is more like the parlor, and the pig does all his feeding activities here. And when he wants to go and drop his waste or the dunks, they pass through this part and go back here. So you come in and so they come right here. This is where they drop their waste, uh, where they do all their toiletry activities. Then we'll have a lint pool here that's going to pass the waste into a trench behind the structure that will carry the waste down to the extreme end and take it to the uh, dump, to the pit where we'll be dropping the waste. So this is how it is designed. So the pit have two areas. You have the feeding area and the dunging area. So the pig actually does its feeding in this part and do the dunging on that part. Now, a lot of persons think pigs are very dirty animals, but if, on the contrary, they are very neat animals. It's just that you find pigs raised in extensive system of production and semi-intensive system. These pigs are always dirty. Why? The reason is because pigs do not have sweat glands. Now, when we are stressed from heat, we sweat it out and it helps to cool our system. But the pigs don't have a sweat gland on their skin. So what happens is when they are stressed from heat and they don't have a good wallow around, they go into muddy environments, pits. So they dip themselves into the pits and come outside. So those deaths and the coolness of the death help to cool their system. So that's why you see that a lot of pigs look very dirty when you have them on extensive system and semi-intensive system. But when you raise them intensively like what we are constructing here, the pigs are always neat. As a matter of fact, if you drop any waste on this feeding area for the pigs, they will pick it up with their snout. That front part of the pig is called the snout. They will pick it up with the snout and take it to the backside where they drop their dung and they keep it there because the pig wants this area to be neat at all times. So that's how pigs originally are. So the whole idea of pigs are very dirty animals is as a result of the system of production. Just like if you have animals growing under extensive system and you have them growing under intensive system, there's a, a, a vast difference in terms of growth rate and production rates the difference is very huge because one animal is well taken care of and the other has to fend for itself so that is why pigs live the way they are so here we can actually raise the pigs if we want very fat pigs we can raise fat pigs if we want lean pigs we can raise lean pigs so the lean pigs will burn the fat out of the, uh, the pig by manipulating the feed of the animal so it helps to reduce the amount of 
parts accumulated in the system of the pig. So you see the pig lean. And when you slaughter it, sometimes you will not even know that that's pig. So there's a lot you need to understand about pig. Uh, I'm going to do an extensive or an exclusive lecture on this. We are just working on the construction phase. If you turn around, you will see a lot of activities still going on there. There are still people working. So those are the workmen. You can see the blocks and all of that. So uh, this part of the video, we have not come to the detailed analysis of the lifestyle of the pig. We are only showing you the design of the pen. So for intensive production, you must have, for the breeding stock especially, you must have a feeding area and a dunging area. So when the, uh, the female pig, which is the sow, once she farrows, once she puts to bed, she can hatch a very neat environment to take care of her young ones. So they are not easily prone to infection as the other animals raised under extensive production will do. So we'll just focus on showing you the building round and the design we have chosen for this one. And in subsequent videos, as the product, as the construction takes shape, I will keep updating you on how things are progressing and also be giving you some tips about peak production and management. But at some point, I'm going to take time to do an exclusive uh, uh, video on peak production and management to tell you the benefits and the, the, the uh, economic values of peak production. So basically what we are showing you now is just the design. So we have this one, you can see this one here. This is the parlor part of it, and that's the room part of it. So the pig passes through this area to go inside and drop its waste and come back on this part and live its normal life here. So we'll choose either one of these sides or this side to have the feeder for the pig. So they feed from this area, and of course we'll be using nipple drinkers. So the nipple drinkers will have to be on the back side so that they don't litter this environment with water. So while they are drinking, the droplets of water will not litter this area. So we'll have the nipple drinkers installed by the back part, which is the run of the pig uh, uh, structure. So there are lots we still have to do. We are still at the uh, ele uh, elementary stage or the pre pre preliminary stage of the construction work. So we'll just take you down. Just take you down through inside so you you understand last time when we made a video we said we've stepped it down because the land is slopy and we cannot raise that part of it to get level with this part because it will take too much materials so we had to do a step down now if you look there you can see the step we have one two three so there are three steps there we also have three steps here so this is the first step and this is the second step. So you can see I just came down from the first step and there's another step down there again. So the design is still the same everywhere. Um, so that's the way it's been factored in. Now we'll just take you straight to the airstream. So this is the passage. You can have wheelbarrows, you can have your farm implements and materials. You have access to go around even if you are as fat as uh, four times my size, no problem. You can actually pass through this environment to look at your pigs and to also take care of uh, other routine activities. So this is the same design we have here. This is the doorway and that's the back part to the uh, waste part of the pig. So this is going to be a dwarf wall structure. We don't need more than four to five coaches once we do the casting of the ground. From the casting to the top has to be four blocks, maximum five blocks. So you have a, a cross ventilation between the block and the roof. So you have a lot of air flowing through the building. Like we said, peats don't have sweat glands and they uh, suffer from heat stress a lot. So we need good amounts of ventilation cross ventilation within the building, the structure, so that the animals can thrive very well. And then, of course, we're going to make provision for Walu, or there's going to be uh, a management system that takes care of sprinkling water on the pigs occasionally in order to keep their temperature cool when uh, the temperature is too high. So, 
Now this is the second step. We're gonna make a step from here down to the next one. More like a staircase. But for now, since we are still under construction, uh, we've not been able to make that provision, but there's gonna be a step down here. So when you walk down from that extreme down here, you just step down, like you're going down stairs. So that's how we're gonna design it. So this is just the way it is. We have uh, 26 pens on the right, 26 pens on the left. So giving us a total of 52 pens on this structure. I will have the same thing on the other structure because the two structures are the same size. But the design is, we'll have the parent stock here. The breeding pigs that will be brought in will be holding and will be held in this uh, structure. While the other structure will be strictly for the winners. Now when the uh, mother pig, the sow, delivers, she nurses her young ones for about 8 weeks to 12 weeks. After 8 weeks, we we'll win them. So the process of taking out the young ones from the mother or the mother from the young ones is called winning. So we'll win them and we we'll take the winners to the other pens where they will be growing uh, at a very fast rate. We'll give them feed that will boost their growth because we have to maintain a standard for both the winners and the breeding stock. The type of feed you give to the parent stock, you have to regulate it because of the purpose of the animals. You don't just give them any type of food because the breeding animal has to have a certain a physiological status. They have to be in a certain shape, especially the male, which is the boa, because for it to mount, it has to have a particular uh, features or characteristics to have strong legs, good head, and all of that. So, of course, you know, if the animal is deformed, it cannot mount the female. So we also have to regulate the type of feed we give to the boa and also the sows, the in sows, which is the pregnant sow, and the dry sow, which is the one that I just finished lactating, and also the, the gilts, the young females that have not yet uh, given birth at all. They are called gilts. So those ones, there are different rations that will be prepared for them. So that is why it's always good for you to consult a professionals when you are actually doing these things we don't just say them we we say them because we know them and we practicalize them just as we can tell you about peak structure and we are structuring it here so this video is going to come in series like we usually have our poultry layer videos in series so that's how this peak video is also going to come in series we've shown you the first part now we're showing you this the next phase is going to look a lot more different than what you're seeing here. So this is the passage. It's all the same thing. You move down to the extreme end. Now, if you come inside now, we'll have a water trench here. Uh, let me just explain it to you. We're still gonna do it, but uh, let me just explain it. So we'll have a one foot wall here, and it will be casted. There will be a water trench running the length of the structure. So the waste of the pig will be flushed into it and it will run off straight to a pit where we're going to have all the dunks and we can collect them when we want to. So because of that, these buildings, the slab or the German floor or the casting, whatever terminology you understand, will be sloped gently, just about two inches slope, so that if there's a water spillage or anything, it will run off straight to the back side because uh, it will also make the cleaning of the house a lot more easier. So once the farm attendants come, they can easily splash water on the floor and sweep it so the water runs off uh, gently. So there's a lot we can tell you. I will probably will just give you a better view of the other structure. I will round it up. So this is the other structure. You can see we've just done the ramming uh, before we do the casting or whatever we need to set the fence so that it will reduce the amount of material that will go in so we we'll just floor the individual pens instead of just flowing everywhere so that's it uh, once we're done with this one we'll move over to the other one so a lot of money has been invested here and of course we have a great admiration for these clients for doing this project and uh, we also encourage those of you out there who want to go into farming fine it may look easy 
I explained things in detail, but that does not mean uh, you can do it on your own. But on a small scale, you can practice on your own. But if you want to do something like this, a massive project like this, you need the services of a qualified consultant. So you must make that call. Get a qualified consultant to set up your farm for you. It may cost you an additional million or a few more thousands, but it's whatever that is worth doing, it's worth doing well. So, um, of course, there's a lot to come from this project, but at this point, I think we'll call it a day. So I want to say thank you. God bless you. And also, please do not forget to subscribe to our channel. As you can see, we have a lot of content to give you. Uh, if this is your first time you're seeing our videos, please ensure to subscribe. We have videos on snail. We have videos on poultry. We have videos on grass cutter. We have videos on rabbits and now pigs. So uh, once you subscribe, you have the opportunity of seeing all those videos. And also don't forget to click on the bell icon. So whenever we upload a new video, you get a notification. You'll be the first to watch the video. So thank you. We've said a lot today. Once again, this is a view of the farm. Uh, it's here in Edo State, Benin. Like, uh, yeah, last time I said if I wasn't married, probably I would have gotten married here because Benin people like me a lot. And I like Benin people a lot because they give me a lot of jobs. I have so many jobs in Benin that some persons already think I'm from Edo State. No, I'm a bias and I'm an angel man. So, but I want to thank you. Thank you, all my fans and everybody that's been following our channel. And just in case you want to reach us, the number is on the link below the video. Below the video. And also, uh, you can call us. The number is plus 2348068 Thank you. God bless you. And bye-bye.